Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the June 2024 R replacement paper from the Pure Mathematics P2 International A Level and Excel exam. And in this question, we have a trig equation that we have to solve. So it says solve for um, x between zero and two pi. The equation three sine x times tan x equals 11 plus cosine x giving the answer in radians to three decimal places. So before I start, I'm going to make sure that my calculator is in radian mode and it is, okay? So that's just to make sure in the beginning. Now, I want to rewrite this in such a way that I'll be able to solve it. And one of the first things you have to try to look at is how is it that I can actually make any changes to this thing? Okay, one of our goals would be to try to rewrite this in such a way that it's every term is related to the same trig function. Okay, so if you can't see the whole journey in front of you from the beginning, what you can do is just take it step by step. So you can say to yourself, look, I've got three sine x, I've got tan x, I've got 11 plus cosine x, the two identities in P2 that we must know are the fundamental identity sine squared x, must be squared, plus cosine squared x equals 1. They must be squared. It's not the same as sine x plus cosine x equals 1. That's not, that's not true. All right. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. All right. Sine x plus cosine x does not equal 1. All right. So you've got to be very careful about that. Now, the other identity that we know is that the tan of x is equal to sine x over cosine x. These are not given to us in the formula sheet in Excel. But we, we must know them. All right, so these are the two identities that we have to use. And if you look at these terms, the only one really that we can make any changes um, to seems to be the tan x. We can replace tan x with sine x over cosine x. And that might start us on a little journey now. So we have three sine x times, instead of tan x, I'm going to put sine x over cosine x equals 11 plus cosine x. Now, what you can see here is we can, first of all, we can multiply the sine x by itself um, because it's sine x times sine x. So you get three sine x all squared, which is written as sine squared x. Remember, uh, sine squared x actually means sine x multiplied by itself sine x all squared um, over cosine x is equal to 11 plus cosine x. And the next thing we can do is we can multiply both sides by cosine x to get rid of the fraction, in which case you, let, you end up with 3 sine squared x equals, when you multiply this side by cosine x, you get 11 times cosine x plus cosine x times itself cosine squared x. Okay, now we can think about this identity over here. And we can see that we've got sine squared x, we've got cosine squared x, and we've got cosine x. Now, the things that can be changed easily are the things that are squared when you're dealing with sine and cosine squared x because of this identity. Right? I, can, I can write cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. I can write sine squared x as 1 minus cosine squared x. So I can use some substitution to try to make them the same. Now, what you should realize here is the cosine x, it's difficult to change it, all right? And this here is already in terms of cosine x. So what we want to change is a sine squared x. That will make us have everything in terms of the same cosine or the same ratio, all to do with cosines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sine squared x and I'm going to replace it with 1 minus cosine squared x because I'm just rearranging that. We know that sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So I can take the sine squared x and replace it with 1 minus cosine squared x. And that's equal to 11 times cosine x plus cosine squared x. So I've got 3 minus 3 cosine squared x equals 11 cosine x plus cosine squared x. Now I can see that I have something where I can simplify this a little bit and we have what's called a disguised quadratic. 
Um, so what I can do is I can get rid of everything from this side. I can, first of all, add three cosine squared x to both sides. So I end up with three cosine squared x plus cosine squared x. That's four cosine squared x plus 11 um, cosine x. And then take away three from both sides, minus three. And if you want to make things look a bit more familiar, what you could do at this stage is you can say, um, let cosine x equals, for example, u, right? In which case you end up with 4u squared plus 11u take away 3 is equal to 0. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factorize this, or try to factorize this first, see if it factorizes. So I have 4u squared and minus 3. So I'm looking for these two terms. These two terms must multiply to give you the same as these two. That's how you can work out so minus 12u squared. And I know that the sum of these two terms must be the same as plus 11u. So I have to have two different signs. And I want a product of 12 and a sum of plus 11. That's going to be 12 and 1. So you're going to have plus 12u and minus u. When I multiply them together, I get negative 12u squared. When I add them, I get plus 11u. So here I can take out the common factor from these two terms, which would be 4 and u. 4u times u is 4u squared. 4u times plus 3 is 12u. And u times minus 1 is minus u. So I end up with my two factors, 4u minus 1 and u plus 3 equals 0. So u is equal to a quarter and u equals negative 3. All right, so now we can say, all right, that means cosine of x is equal to a quarter and cosine of x equals negative 3. Now, if I try to solve this, there will be no solution, this part, because we know the cosine curve, um, the highest it ever goes to is 1. And the lowest it ever goes to is minus 1. It can never go down minus 3. So there'll be no solution to this. If you try to solve this, you will get what's called math error in your calculator. Now, cosine x equals a quarter. So x equals the inverse cosine of a quarter. This will have some solutions, as we can see. The quarters over here, there's going to be in between 0 and 2 pi. There's going to be two solutions. Okay, between 0 and 2 pi. So to find those solutions, we take a calculator. We already made sure that it's in, in, in radian mode. And we just put shift cosine, that's inverse cosine of 1 over 4. And we will get what's called the principal solution first, which is 1.3181. 1.3181. And then to find the other solution, we're going to do 2 pi minus that, because this is the first solution that we got, that's the first solution. And the second solution here is in such a place by symmetry, it's going to be 2 pi, 360 degrees minus the angle. So 2 pi, because we're using radians, minus 1.3181. So that's going to give us, so we got this, we got 2 pi minus the answer. So 2 times pi minus the answer, that gives us 4.965. 4.9650. All right, so here we have the two answers, okay, which are both within the range 0 to 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is like 6 point something. Other answers will be outside of the range because if I want to find other answers, I'd add 2 pi to these two answers, and of course, that will take us outside of the range. So we have our final answers x equals 1 point, what did they ask us? Three decimal places 1.318. And 4.965. Okay, so those are our answers. Yeah. Okay, so that solves question seven, part one. Okay, so that's um, one type of trigger equation. Number two now. All right, so it's continuing on from the answer here. It says, given that theta is okay so this is a different question actually it's not actually following on at all from the first question it's a totally different question you might you might have thought it's to do this it says given that theta is between 0 and 90 degrees and cosine theta is a third find in its simplest form the exact value of tan theta okay good 
So this is one of those type of questions which um, you see in the, in the book actually, but I don't really find it come up much. But what I'm going to do is the way I like to do is I'll do, I'm going to draw my um, like you could say almost unit circle, right? So we know that theta is between zero and ninety degrees. So it's going to be in this first quadrant, and cosine of theta is one over three. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse is one over three. So it's get this a bit more neater. Okay, so the cosine of the angle theta. So if this is theta is going to be one over three. So I'm going to draw a little um, line here. Okay. So this is right angle cosine of theta. So this would be one and this would be three. Okay. Um, find in its simplest form the exact value of tan theta. So to find tan theta, the tan of theta would be opposite over um, adjacent. So we're going to find what this is. Right, let's call it x. So we can see from this right angle triangle that x squared is equal to 3 squared minus 1 squared. That's the shorter side. So we know the square of this is equal to the sum of the squares of these two. So that means x squared is equal to 9 minus 1, which is 8. So x is equal to the square root of 8. So x is going to be, um, if you take out the perfect square, it will be 2 root 2. 2 root 2, right? So x is 2 root 2. So therefore, we can say that the exact value of tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be just 2 root 2. And there we have the answer. Very simple. Right? So it's not related to the first part of the question here at all. It's a totally separate question. All right? So that's how I would tackle such a question. Um, there are other ways of doing it. This is using kind of like a triangle. You could also use some sort of, um, some sort of, what's the name, uh, identity. So I could, for example, do the following. I'll just show you an alternative method. Okay. We know that um, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So if I know cosine theta is a third, so I can say sine squared theta plus a third squared is equal to 1. So I can say sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 1 over 9. So sine squared theta is equal to 8 over 9. Okay, which means therefore that sine theta, sine theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of, um, you can say 8 over 3. We just do the square root on the top because the 9 becomes a 3 when you square root it. So plus or minus the square root of 8 over 3. So sine theta is equal to 2 root 2 over 3. Okay, y plus positive because we're in the first quadrant. Because zero, theta is between 0 and 90, so it's positive. First quadrant, okay? Theta is between 0 and 90, which is in the first quadrant where all of them are positive. Now... We know that tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. So you got 2 root 2 over 3 divided by cosine theta, which we're already told is 1 over 3, which is 2 root 2 over 3 times 3 over 1. They cancel out, so you're left with 2 root 2. So therefore, we can say tan theta is equal to 2 root 2. So you can use identities. We can use this unit circle kind of triangle method. Both of them are perfectly fine methods of answering this question. Okay, so there is the answer to question number seven. Now, it could have been that they gave us this in another quadrant. They could have given this triangle, for example, in the second quadrant or the third quadrant, which will change the values of, you know, because we know that here in this quadrant, there's no issue because all of them are positive. But sometimes, if you're here, only the sine would be positive. That means the tan and the cosine would give you a negative value. And here we know that only tan is positive. And here we know that only cosine is positive. So you've got to be careful, all right, about where, you know, the triangle that you draw is, which quadrant it's going to be in, okay? So sometimes the answer might come out as positive or negative and so on. And, um, of course, that will affect this. You have to, when you put plus or minus, 
the square root of 8 over 3. You have to think about which quadrant we're in to decide the sign is positive in the first quadrant, therefore I'll use a positive value. If it was, for example, in the third quadrant, I'd have to use a negative value, and so on. So be careful about that in other questions that might come up about this. Well, that completes question number seven from the uh, June 2024 R paper of uh, Pure Mathematics P2. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of trigonometry and trig equations you can find in this playlist. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And on the top here, you will find a video which tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.